Hey everybody, welcome back, and we are continuing our playthrough of Six Fleet from Victory Games, scenario number five, Agent Offensive, and we are stepping into turn three, the night turn. Um, pretty much the only real difference for night turns is that um, uh, as far as aircraft go, only land-based aircraft may fly missions, and only aircraft uh, launching from U.S. carriers can fly missions. Nobody else can fly missions at nighttime. Um, <laughs> I really want to get this out of the way now because because I am I am I'm kind of a I'm not a clever man. We know <laughs> this. I really 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 messed up. Um, a rule uh, in turn two and probably even as far back as turn one and I should have picked it up when I was kind of pointing out the ASW combat procedures well there's this little thing right down here and I'm sure maybe some of you may have caught it watching the video there is no defensive dice roll for ASW combat which makes ASW combat against submarines a little bit deadlier um, now, see, I've always known that there was always one of the, the combat summaries that didn't involve a uh, defensive role, and I seem to always forget it that's AS, uh, that it's ASW. That could have changed a lot of things last turn. However, um, I did it for both sides, so I'm not going to bother to try to go back, retcon any of it. It is going to stand and stay the way it is. So, let us go ahead and jump into... Turn three, um, and we start off with the cap phase. Now, normally, uh, the mints can would be able to put up her uh, Yak 36s. Unfortunately, it's a night turn, and Soviet carriers cannot launch. U.S. carriers, however, can. So we're going to take the uh, F-14 Tomcats that I that I erroneously identified as uh, F-16s and F-18s within a few seconds of each other. <laughs> last game and the advanced early warning and since they're uh, flying off the US carrier I'm gonna go ahead and put them on cap and we want to put those on cap because if you would caught it uh, land-based aircraft can still fly normally so yeah all those badgers sitting up in Sevastopol can still fly um, I think that's pretty much it for the cap phase, and then from the cap phase we go into the activation, the activity cycle, or that is part of the activity, mine sweeping, no mine sweeping, replenishment, advanced game only, action phase, first action phase, and I was smart enough to grab my clipboard this time so I can start jotting things down and I need to jot more notes down because we're starting to get to the point where we've got lots of combat integers and numbers and and things that I have a hard time keeping a keeping a memory of. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into phase or activation one, three, it's the Soviets. Uh, so jot that down. And we are going to play with submarines. We're going to go ahead and jump on the simple fact that uh, I was messing up Soviet submarines last time. And hopefully this time we'll be able to get them a little bit more correct. All right. Start off with this wounded one. Wounded. She's not alive. She's damaged. I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, and hold her kind of hiding in there. Um, so if any task, American task force get in that deep, uh, this one is good. Oh, that's task force eight. Uh, then we'll go ahead and take this one. She's going to move into seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we'll go ahead and pop off ASW at her. And no defensive roll for ASW. Is a nine on the nine to fourteen column one <laughs> is going to be a two, and that's not even going to touch the U.S. sub. Okay. Let's go ahead and take this sub up here. 
And it's got an ASW of six. No defensive roll. Two bad dice rolls this turn is a damage of two. And Boston's got a defense of seven, so that's not going to hurt her. Should I move this submarine up? Actually, you know what? I'm not... Hmm. Now, we're going to leave that submarine there. I kind of still need a kind of a tripwire to catch the Jersey Battle Group. We'll keep the other submarine right here because, again, we want to make sure we catch the uh, Jersey Battle Group as she comes through. Um, so that kind of leaves these two subs here. And we don't know that the group battle group is there. So, well, let's go sub hunting then. So we'll go move and go right there. Uh, ASW of three. I'm sure she probably even, well, let's see. ASW of three. Defense of six. Can I even, it is possible for me to damage her, okay. So, five on the three column is a three. And she's got a defense of six, which actually does damage the drum. Okay. And then we're going to take this other Soviet submarine, the wounded one, which also has an ASW-3. We're going to move her over and attack the drum as well. Three. I don't think that's going to do it this time. Nope. Two damage points. Well, she's wounded. Maybe that changes her. Nope, even wounded. Her defense is six. So it's not going to do any anything to her. Alright, so that's subs. Now, we know that the battle group, the Kirov battle group, is right there. Hmm. You know what? Let's go with subs as well. She is going to move over here and pop off a 9 ASW. Now we're seeing the strength of the uh, US submarines now that they, we don't have to worry about. ASW defensive roll. Uh, four on the nine column is a three, which is not quite half. So no damage there. And I think the drum is going to go ahead and go after the wounded Soviet submarine. So her attack is five, no defensive roll. We got a three on the five column which is a two. Her defense is a six, so no damage there either. And you know what? She is going to go ahead and kind of skedaddle out of the way. Four. Okay. And this sub, the Boston, with its attack value of nine, is going to attack the Soviet sub that it's been off against. Ooh, one on the nine column is a two, and I believe that's one of the new, yeah, that's one of the new Soviet subs with a defense of seven, so that doesn't do anything. And she is going to, she is going to stay right there. The other sub has got a movement of six. One, two, three, four, five, six and is going to attack the Soviet sub that we've detected. Uh, let's see, what's her? Uh, ASW of six. Got a four. Three, unfortunately her defense is a seven, so that's not going to damage her. And since she's fired, she's now detected. Now, if you notice, I wasn't able to detect her when she moved from here to here because like I said you got to move at least two hexes in a limited or extended zone and she doesn't pick up this Soviet submarine because well that Soviet submarine hasn't moved in her limited 
uh, or extended detection. Well, submarines only have limited detection range. Um, all right, so that's phase one, or yeah. Action segment one, segment two. Three, Soviets again. Jot this down, okay. We still don't know where their surface group is at. So let's go ahead and do surface ships. Uh, ah, that's the Kira. That's the uh, that's the Mints task group. So one, two, three, four. Yes, yeah, just still don't know where that stupid American task force is. All right, well, she'll go ahead and move here, and we'll do anti-submarine warfare. And it was <laughs> last turn, so I think it was 25, so it's 21 on the 27 column. No defensive roll this time. We got a 6. All right, that's going to change things. Yep, 21 to 27 with a roll of a 6 is 5 damage points. It's not going to be enough to sink her, but... She has a defense of seven, so the Baltimore is damaged. Uh, and the two OSA patrol boats are going to stay there, continuing to uh, interdict Lemnos. Remember, we had those two squadrons there. Um, so the U.S. You know what? I actually need to check something. I need to check to see if launching an airstrike... And I should have checked this earlier. If launching an airstrike uh, s reveals an uh, undetected unit, because if it does, that actually would have revealed the uh, Nimitz battle group a couple turns ago. Let's see, combat air patrol. Combat. All right. Placement of detection markers. Nope. 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 Action phase. Okay, at the moment, an enemy surface unit or stack of unit performs gunnery, ASW, or SSM combat against a friendly unit. All right. It's an enemy submarine performing torpedo, ASW, or ASM combat against a friendly unit. All right, so airstrikes do not set off the detection. So we're going to go ahead and take the... Since the... Nimitz has, or the, uh, keep calling it, yeah, the Nimitz has got this uh, S3 ASW. They're going to go ahead. It's got an itty bitty ASW3, which actually makes it almost halfway decent now that we don't have um, uh, ASW defense dice rules. And really, with 40 movement, she's going to go after that damage sub there. So. Three, it's, or it's a four on the three column, which is a two, which I don't think is going to be enough. No, nope, our defense is six. Now, I could take the remaining aircraft and do a strike on the Minsk, oh, no, that's not her. Do a strike on the Minsk. You know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's do a, let's do a bombing run against the Minsk. And so basically, we're going to be taking the A6 squadron and the two F-18 squadrons and sending them in against the Mints Task Force. Now things are going to get a little bit high with the numbers. So um, it's actually probably a good time for them to do this as there is no AS or no uh, no uh, cap. Mints doesn't have a cap up. So let's go ahead and take a look. Bombing combat. Okay. Active air units may attack any and all detective surface units to target hex or base hex with a bombing. If the defense dice roll modifier between is between five and seven, one air unit is damaged. Defense dice roll modifier is eight or more. Two air units of damage. Plus one dice roll for each attack com. 
Okay, Defender. Let's go ahead and combine area AA value of all units in the target hex. Now, AA and close AA, I always get those two numbers backwards, so let me check real quick. Okay, area AA is the bigger number. this over a little bit and I hope everybody can actually see the numbers on there all right so the Minsk has got five nine thirteen ooh I only got thirteen area ooh. okay so you know what let's jot that down because I will forget that go back over at the next step. Uh, add close AA value of target units. Okay, I've got a... Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the U.S. aircraft. They've got a bombing value of 50, 50, and 50. So I've got 150 attack factors. Um... <laughs> now, part of me wants to put all of them on the Minsk, but, you know, we can break it up any way we want. And, you know, I'm actually kind of a fan knocking out escorts first. So let's put 50 on the Retyev, 50 on the Zakra. Actually, no. Let's put 45 on the Retyev, 45 on the Zakra, 45 on the Otlich, and 15 on the Azov. Alright, so the next step is add close A value of the ship under target. Unless it is a target too, while well, we're attacking all the ships in the bottom line. So if I was going after the Minsk, then they would get all their close AA. Add close AA of target units. So 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40, 15, 17. We add that onto the 13 that we had before, which gives us a AA value of 30. And it's a plus two to the defensive dice roll if the targets are in a task force. All right. So we're going to be looking on the 28 to 35 column. And we're going to add two to the dice roll because the uh, target is a task force. So we got a four plus two is a six on the 28 to 35 is a 6 dice roll modifier. Wow, pretty hefty. Alrighty, so we went ahead and we said we were putting 45 on the Uryev, which is going to be the 36 to 45 column. You see how I did that? I could have gone with the 50 column for three of them, but, you know, let's go with 45. Yeah, it's column chasing. It's, 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 I don't know. I don't know if it's gamey or not, but <laughs> I did it. So we're looking on the 36 to 45 column. A minus 6 on the dice roll. Okay, 3 minus 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 3 is a 2. And the Red Sea only has a defensive 2, so that's going to sink her. And then the Zakar. 5 minus 6 is a negative 1, is a 3. Her defense is 3, so that sinks that destroyer as well. And the th third one, 1, is going to be a minus 5, which is a 0, which is nothing. And then the 15 points on the Azov is a 1, is going to be a minus 6, is going to be nothing. All right, so actually that was a pretty pretty uh, uh, productive turn. Uh, American uh, F-18s and A-6s came screaming in and did a night attack and managed to sink a frigate and a destroyer. And more importantly, the task force no longer has greater than four ships. Now this is important because task forces can only exist with four or more ships. She is no longer a task force. Well, task group, but I call them task force. So we take the task force marker off, put the ships actually on the stack. Now, what that means is that, if you'll notice, I had a uh, uh, 
plus two defense modifier for the uh, bombing run uh, for the task group. She no longer has that. So any other attacks from here on out are going to be at a, uh, not at a plus two. But let's go ahead and take a look at the two Soviet ships that were sunk. Uh, here we have Retsia Frigate and, like I said, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce I know it's a longer name. So, it looks like the U.S. has now kind of squeaked out a little bit of a lead because they have lost two frigates and the Soviets have lost a frigate and a destroyer. Um, let's see, and these guys will return to base. Is there any other air I can do? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't believe there's any other air I can do. All right, third phase. Uh, we got a six, which is the U.S. Um, the U.S. has not done their surface yet, so they're going to have to do their surface. You know what? The Nimitz task group is just fine sitting there off the boot of Italy. And the Jersey is going to... One, two, three, four. Now, she's still not detected. Oh, and if you'll notice, I grabbed the uh, Deo as well and moved her along with the task group. I cannot add her officially to the task group until the morning turn. And also, the ships have not, the submarines have not detected her because she only moved one hex in their limited detection zone. Um, so that's the U.S. surface. Now Soviet air, unfortunately, we still don't know where the damn carrier is at. Annoying. So those Tupolovs are continuing to sit in Sevastopol on the runways, much to the Black Sea Fleet commander's chagrin, I'm sure. Um, so, okay, that will be it for turn three. And since it is a night turn, there are some final bookkeeping and administrative steps we go through. 22 minutes, I should be able to finish this off. Okay, terminal cycle, night turns only. Fuel phase, if the logistics option is used, that's advanced game only. Nope, strategic air mission termination phase and detection removal phase. Surface and submarine units that are not in enemy detection zones have their detection markers removed. All right, so this submarine is not in a detection zone. These guys do not have their detection removed. These guys are not in a zone, in a detection zone, so they get theirs removed. And not all these are in detection zones, so they do not get them removed. Although, like I said, the task force does not change um, its status any. And then all uh, aircraft that were on tactical missions return to base. Um, I believe <laughs> the Soviets had one in Benghazi. And, you know, it really doesn't matter what the, where these Tupolevs go because they can land pretty much anywhere. Or not, well, they have the range to range anywhere. I think one of them was in Tripoli. And I could have swore one of them was, actually, yeah, no, I think one of them was up in Crimea. Uh, for the U.S., their interceptor and one of the P3 Orions went back at Sigonel in Sicily. And the other two P3 Orions. I believe one was in Sardinia, and the other one was in Naples. Again, really doesn't matter with those units. They've got such the range that they can, you know, they can fly anywhere they want to. Um, and also cap removal, should have done that. And that's it for turn three. Hope everybody enjoyed. Sorry for the big flub with the, uh, with the, uh, any submarine warfare defense role. Oh, I am going to have to cut this. I will be right back. So, um, we're going to be stepping into turn four, which is an AM turn. Questions, comments? Ooh, I think there was something on, something about getting the uh, American task groups into the Aegean early for extra victory points. Let's see if I can Da, da, da. 
No, nothing, nothing special for getting them there early. Okay, probably thinking of another scenario. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to be jumping into turn four, the AM turn, when we come back. Hopefully, I'll be able to track down that stupid Kennedy task group uh, and get unleash those Tupolovs on them. Um, and uh, get 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 some more exciting ship to ship naval combat going. All right, folks, that's all I got. Questions, comments, concern, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I love saying that. I know I'm not the first person that could possibly have ever come up with that um, because I'm not that clever to come up with something original. But yeah, that's what we got, boys and girls. I'm talking to everybody later. See ya. Oh, 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 one last thing, real quick, before I before I go. Um, one thing we forgot off the bombing combat. If defense dice roll modifier between 5 and 7, one air unit is damaged. I rolled a 6, so one of the American attacking air units that attacked the, uh, the, the Mince Battle Group has actually ended up being damaged. Um, and, you know, it's unlikely. Whoops. Let's have the right group there. Uh, so we had the uh, two F-18s and one A-6. You know what? Let's just roll it randomly. I'm not going to make that decision. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so one of the F-18 squadrons is damaged. Okay, so she's damaged. All right. <laughs> See? Aren't you glad I caught that before the next turn? All right. Now I'm out.